The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. Live from the Taj Mahal yes, of sir. football in the SWBC podcast studios, it is the Players' Lounge, <laughs> sponsored by Aristocrat <laughs> Gaming. Hey, you are now rocking with the best. You know who's at the desk, Heckman Harrison, mm -hmm. my man Barry Church, for, former free safety for the Dallas Cowboys, and we have the pride of Windsor. Yes, in the indeed. Field, yes, Taro indeed. Crawford the pride Yo, of is here. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, look, first of all, it is you never know a man until you do a show with a man, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, I've been dying to meet you. I don't have nothing but respect <laughs> for your game, dog. I appreciate but, it. Yeah. Uh, we go. We go dig into some things Let's today, dig. boy. Hey, hey, no man. stone will be left unturned. There we go. I love that. We, we got some defensive line special special. That's what we want to hear about. That's you know? what I mean. These past, we've been throwing See. our opinions out there, See, but I know. I know. We gotta I go know. with the D line specialist. I already knew it was coming. I already knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Danny McCray is on assignment today. Newey Scrubs, let me drive the bus, and so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, but man, when I get an opportunity to do a show, first thing I do is I check in with my brothers. Man, I want to know how your mind is. Before we start talking ball, how are you, Tyrone? Man, my mind is great. Uh, you know, I got a beautiful family around me. I'm super grateful. Um, you know, God is good. He's uh, put four girls, yes. you know, in my life. Actually, five. You know, my <laughs> wife, my four daughters. Obviously, I got my mom. And uh, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we just been we just been vibing out. We've had a good summer. Um, you know, got the kids to experience a lot of different things. Uh, I got to go down to Idaho, uh, visit the Van Der Rushes, okay. and uh, okay. you know, do a little bit of lake time there. Got to go out to camp. Um, go and watch the boys practice a little bit and then go down to Santa Barbara visit the uh, Uncle Sean Lee. Yeah, you know the general. Saying? There we go. Yeah, the general. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, in, in life, you know, I've just been chilling. Uh, me and my brother, you know, put together, uh, you know, a couple businesses, one of them being outdoor um, construction uh, that we love. You know, it's called Crawford Signature Spaces. And, uh, uh, you know, other than that, I, I personally, I do a little bit of D line stuff, uh, athlete stuff, um, online and, and through YouTube. And, uh, that's about to be released here soon too. And, you know, it's, it's my same brand, the work brand, uh, yeah. just work extra hard, get a little bit of extra work in. Dude, know. that's awesome, man. I, I'm yeah. glad to hear that, man. Glad to hear you're doing good. Four girls. I have three. Mm -hmm. So Ooh, yeah. pray, I'm going to pray for you. Would you pray for me? Wait, we're pray for <laughs> pray for each other. <laughs> you got a lot of girls in this group right here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. BC, how you doing, bro? Man. Like always doing amazing, man. You know, count my blessings every time. It's hot. It's real hot down here in Dallas, but I'm kind of used to it nowadays. Family doing great. Um, little one, you know, he's battling a little bit of a headache, so he had to stay home from school a little bit. Okay. So I, I had daddy daycare for a little bit before I came out here. But other than that, man, things are doing amazing. Wife's business is crushing it as usual. So, um, yeah, life's pretty good, man. Can't complain. Man, I, I love to hear it, man. Glad, glad to be in the room with you, brothers, man. Wait, and, wait, wait. And, how, how you what? doing? Heck? We ain't even throw, we got throw it How you doing, big dog? No, I, every time the light turned green and to open that door down there, I think. Somebody punking me, man. <laughs> what you talking about? I'm in the Taj Mahal of football, man. It's all good in my world, man. I, trust me, it's all good, BC, man. Yeah, everything is it, everything is wonderful, man. I'm, I'm straight, um, but guys, I know y'all got an opportunity to watch the game uh, uh, on Saturday. Cowboys take on the Las Vegas. Raiders and and pulled out a victory uh, for they the did. first preseason victory and man there's a lot of things to take apart yeah. in that game and what I want to do is just kind of segment it and make sure that we get into the players that we knew coming into that game needed to have a pretty good showing and so um, expectation wise what you thought or you know who were some guys that you went in saying look this guy has to have a game he fulfilled that um, who are some guys that you were looking at and Tyrone I'll start with you um well, I mean, you know, personally, when, when I'm watching the game, I can't take my eyes off the D-line. Yep. So, um, you know, for me, um, it's hard for me to, you know, give you offensive perspectives and my opinion on, <laughs> on a lot of different offensive guys. Although I did watch um, – uh, you know, I, I had my eye on uh, Max Crosby a little bit, and I, and I got to watch Tyler go up against Max. So, I mean, I, I feel like he did a, a great job. And, um, you know, I was uh, – you know, I was – I thought, I thought his performance was well. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, going on to the defense, you know, and, again, 
I don't want to, I'm not the guy, like, this is why I, I don't think I could do TV or anything like that, because I'm not the guy to, you know, Come on. try and crush a man for, yeah. um, you know, how he played football. But, um, you know, I feel like the D-line, um, you know, did a good job. Uh, but, you know, I feel like, obviously, um, there's room for improvement. And, mm -hmm. and one of the biggest things is in improving as a D-lineman is just doing your job. If everybody does their job, as, as Church knows when mm -hmm. we were playing, you know, if everybody does their job, everybody has an assignment. If you do that job, you leave the game with an A, like we most of the time yes, did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you control your assignment, then things will go well. And, and you know, if, if, if something goes wrong, then – but you controlled your assignment, everyone was – right on their assignment then you know then you could put it on the d coordinator which it should be anyways yeah. right so um yeah i mean i mean again i think the d line did good um secondary linebackers did good uh but again you know it's it's bad coming from me because i'm not the guy that wants to stow any negativity any 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 players but especially when they're trying to make a team and you know uh this is huge man this is huge for people's families lives you know it changed my life completely so um I don't want to. I don't want to crush anybody too early. Hey, I know, say, once it, maybe later on in the season, yeah. I, I'll, I'll talk about. It. Now, Tyrone, listen, you're on the players' lounge. I hear that. And one thing we do on the lounge, we keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, we do. We not gonna. Hey, we're not gonna bake them completely. Yeah. But it will be a waft of smell. Well, <laughs> well listen. Well, listen. I'll, I'll, I'll do this. Thing. I'll do this. Thing. <laughs> if I have to agree with something, I'll agree with it. There it is. Yes. But you know, I'm, I, I won't be the I won't be the flame though. Let, let me ask you this. <laughs> All, then. Right. All right, let me let me let me ask you this specifically before I go to you. Uh, a guy like mm. Chauncey Golston, who mimics some of the things that you did. You were a guy that went from D tackle to D in, and so he's a tweener, and that's a, he's going to be a guy that we depend on for sure this season. What did you think about him in that preseason game? Okay, so I'm I'm not a uh, I've always been I've been a, I'm a Golston fan, so gotcha. I mean. Um, you know, obviously playing D line. If you know, a lot of people want to see the flash and you know the glam, the glam plays and all that stuff. I'm okay with seeing somebody do their job. Like right. I said, if somebody okay. does their job, they do it well, and they make it easier for the linebacker and they make it easier for the safeties. Um, you know, I think I think that's uh, that's important. Um, you know, so you know that's where I'm going to leave that. Um, but I, you know, I've always been a fan. Of, I've always been a fan of him. And um, please. Don't don't take this the wrong way, but please mention the number, uh, the number of the player, because <laughs> I'd be forgetting these dudes' names. Oh, no, you good, <laughs> brother? Hey, I'm with you. I'm right there. I'd be forgetting you. these dudes. <laughs> hey, don't even worry about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm right there with you. Yeah, don't even worry yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. I'd be forgetting these dudes' names sometimes. <laughs> so like, if you give me the number, like I I do like the way 98 played. You know, I I don't know his name, but I like the way uh, or 93. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like I like the way some of these guys played. Um, you know, when I when I when I when you tell me the number, I'll be like, oh yeah, okay, I remember, I remember some of the places you played. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, um, so just throwing off. Of, so that's just keeping it real. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. that's how we do it. We you keep did. it real yeah, on yeah. this show. But um, that's why I love going to war with, with a guy like Crawford. That's why I loved him being in those trenches because he wasn't about you know hero ball and trying to make every single play out there. It was do your job and your gap, your responsibility. If the play comes your way, you are gonna make it. And he made you know my job at safety a hell of a lot easier. So. That's what – when I look at this defensive line, when I looked at them, you know, this past game, they played, to me, in my opinion, a lot better than they played in, in that first game. We did see a little bit of leaks here and there from the run game, but, you know, that, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. We see that's going to happen. But from what I saw out there, those guys, at least at the point of attack, I thought that they played a lot better. They were able to put some push back there, and they were going against ones. It ain't like, you yes. know, it was – our starting defense versus their st – it was, you know, the backups for the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. You didn't have D-Law out there. Mm -hmm. You didn't have Parsons. You didn't have, you know, Osa Diggy Zula out there against, you know, the ones for the Los Angeles Raiders. They had Bentu out there. They had Zaire White running the ball yeah. out there. And those guys were able to hold their own. I believe they held them to what? Was it six, six, six mm -hmm. points out there? They were able to hold those guys out of the end zone, which was huge. But the thing I looked at most from that, that defensive perspective, at least what I saw early on, was those linebackers once again – were able to fly sideline to sideline. That's and right. that's what we've been missing from this, I don't want to, defensive line, deep, whatever the case may be, those offensive linemen from the other teams getting up to the second level. That's getting the these guys off of their mark and not being able to get downhill. The D-line, in my opinion, did a good job of holding those guys up at the point of attack, doing their responsibility. And you saw guys, I don't want to butcher his lad, his name. I want to say <laughs> Maurice Lafo, the rookie from the rookie from Notre Dame, linebacker yeah. number 35. Maurice Leofow. That, that dude, is he, he looks like a missile out there. Mm -hmm. Young rookie from Notre Dame, he's coming downhill. You saw him all over the place. You know, mm -hmm. he, he popped off the tape all over the place. Of course, you love to see what you saw from Marquise Bell coming downhill as well. But to me, those linebackers, 
This is the second week in a row where they look they look pretty good. Yeah. When you talk about coming downhill, defending the run, and it's like I said before, this was against the ones. Yeah. So to me, I feel like overall, offensive, defensively, we'll tap into the offense a little bit later, but overall, I feel like from what I've seen in this performance, at least there's a tad bit of bit of hopium coming in. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I told you I was off of the hopium narcotic, but there's a tad bit of that coming in. And, you know, I, I like what I've seen so far. I do like what I've seen so far. So, Tyron, we we have uh, we, we talked about a lot of these defensive linemen. And one of the comps that I've gotten from Barry Church about our rookie, Marshawn Nealon, was Tyron Crawford. Yep. And when yep. he said that, I was like, wait a minute. I praise. We starting to. Come on, man. You're jumping out the cake. Yeah, you know? And so, a guy like that, I mean, especially with this defensive line with the that they had last season. What are some of the things for you, like you're looking at and saying that this year's team has to be better at this, and if they do have success, it's going to be because of X? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, like last year um, at the end of the year, you know, I, anybody you talk to, they, they blame the game on the offense and, you know, one guy in particular, which you cannot do. This game is not about that. It's, mm -hmm. it, 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 there's 11 people on the field, you know, for a reason, and um, – you know, I mean, on on the defensive side of things, again, it comes back to you know the the assignments, man. If and, and what Barry's saying, like the linebackers have to be able to move. The linebackers have to; th those are the play; those are the playmakers, and you kind of have to humble yourself as a D lineman at times to let them to let that be the way the game is played. Um, if you, I mean, if you want to win the game um, from the defensive side of things, it has to you have to be, you know, poised in your position and and letting the linebackers be able to do their job, safeties be able to do their job, come downhill. Um, so, yeah, going back to last year's game, you know, I, you know, I personally, um, if I was on that team, I would have held us as the defense um, very highly responsible for that loss mm -hmm. um, because of that in particular thing. <clears throat> People weren't taking care of their – the responsibility. Alignment assignment. Alignment yeah. assignment, key technique. Key technique. You know, yep. it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the thing. And um, and if that's taken care of, there shouldn't be no explosive plays. I mean, you're going to get the odd explosive plays, but there shouldn't be as many explosive mm -hmm. plays happening. And explosive plays is what is what kills you on the defensive side of things. And, and personally, you know, when I seen Green Bay come in here, which I – yeah, yeah trust they, me. They done, they done yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. times. You already know. Yeah, so yeah, with well, the gunslinger A Rod oh, already got man. me a bunch. But um, yeah, I, you know when I see that, uh, I just I, you know the, the that's the thing that makes me cringe. Is you know yeah, of course the, the fans want to see the plays, the huge plays on defense, the sacks, sack strips, and all that. And those are great. Please have those happen. But what needs to be handled is the alignment assignment key technique. You know, like that has to be handled and. Um, like Marinelli used to always say, which is, you know, I, I'll resort back to Marinelli a lot because, you know, he's one of my favorite coaches, favorite, Same you here. know, coordinators. And he, the, the star of the defense is the defense. You know, there's no star. There's no one person. There shouldn't be one person, you know. Um, there's going to be, as there is on this team. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the star of the defense is the defense. And if that's the way you guys play the game, then the defense should handle enough to win the game every time. Oh. It, I don't remember. So how how hard is it? Because it, it, you know it's easy for me to sit here and say, yeah, he he got to hold his point of attack. He got to be able to sit there with you know double teams and be able to get. You played the position. You played on the inside and outside. You played at an extremely high level. How hard is it for that you know one tech, three tech, whatever the case may be, to to hold it there and hold that gap position when you got guys you know big three hundred pounders yeah. barreling down on you from either side? Because I I look at it and I ask you the question because. Last year's, you know, first rounder, Mozzie Smith, you know, he had some struggles, you know, mm -hmm. staying in that gap. And, you know, it's easy for us to come up here and say, man, you, you got to stay there. You got to. How hard is it during on that defensive line to be able to maintain that gap presence to be able to allow your linebackers to go sideline to sideline? Yeah. And, and it's hard. You know, obviously, I mean, what, what uh, Kenya, you say, it's a man's world. It's a man's <laughs> it's world. It's a man's world out there. <laughs> shout out to Kenya. Cole. Yeah. Shout out to Kenya. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, down there it's hard, man. But, you know, um, it, it, there's a lot of factors that come into play, you know. And, again, a lot the linebackers have a lot of responsibility there as well, you know. Um, if if the the offensive lineman doesn't come in down as hard, it's because they were worried about what that linebacker was about to do, true, right? Um, so, you know, if the linebacker gives a little bit better disguise and, you know, you, know, you guys are touching on that in film, you know, that could help. But also, you know, weight, um, the you know, the weight of a player. And then maybe, uh, you know, like – for instance, I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put myself out there. Okay. Um, you know, I, I went from Marinelli where I was getting off 
the bar. I'm, yep. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. So yep. I'm used to that. I'm used to getting to a spot, and I'm used to blowing up the. I'm used to blowing up the gap mm-hmm. to going to Nolan's defense, where I was stepping. I went from stepping forward to stepping sideways, whoa, 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 which whoa, I did whoa, not whoa. understand. Yeah. So yeah. you get you get in the head. You get in the head. Don't go ahead. Don't go ahead. See, that's his, hey, that's okay. My bad. Fault. I, I yeah, let see, it that way. See, no, that's that's my my bad, right my to bad. it. That's my fault. But let me ask but you this. Like, but what I'm saying, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. You can ask me that. But like. For what I'm saying, for certain players, is maybe the maybe they're still getting used to the technique that needs to be played in that certain defense, you know. And sure. and I don't know, I, I don't know it in this case. Okay. But, but what I'm saying is maybe they are getting used to that. Uh, if they're if they're getting out of gas, maybe they're telling them to hold on to the guard, you know. And yeah. like he's like, what do you mean hold on to the guard? I'm used to blasting his head back, you yeah. know. Like yeah. that's what I'm used to, right. and that's what I was always used to is getting that. You know, I was disruption. I was a disruption player. You know, I, was I wasn't used to. There. I wasn't used to holding somebody. <laughs> yeah. They were dance. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. But you, we can go on. Right. No, no, you, you, we're getting passionate. I'm getting no, passionate. no, no. That's, that's, that's what we want. It's, it's, it's the players' lounge. Exactly. This is what we do. Yeah. Um, my my question to you is: being a former player and a guy that took so much pride in, in your job and your alignment assignment and just stopping the run, is it surprising to you the last couple of years, even with Dan Quinn, uh, that the Cowboys just haven't been able to solve that problem in stopping the run? Um, you know, I, I love DQ and I loved him as a as a coordinator. Um, you know, I, yeah, it's been surprising for sure. Um, but you know, a, a lot of that falls on, I, I guess. I guess, yeah. As an as, as an interior D lineman, you know, you gotta take responsibility for a lot of that. You know what I mean? And um, you know, that's what I. You know, that's what we did when we played. And you know, when I, when I knew that, hey, I gotta do my job better. You know that. You know, the responsibility falls on us. And yeah, I'm. You know, I'm the interior D line. Um, I guess we haven't been able to. You know, put the puzzle in order put the puzzle like correctly right now um you know i feel like that that's that's near and you know but you know obviously playing nose is is not easy Mm -hmm. you know there's like nick hayden played nose the best that i've been around and he wasn't yeah the golden (laughs) golden cockadoodle do (laughs) so Wow. Yeah. Marinelli had good days for everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Marinelli's good days were absurd. <laughs> it was unreal. <laughs> his name, wow. The golden yeah. He yeah. literally had a golden rooster on his shirt. That I night. love it. Yeah. He named everybody. He yeah. was awesome. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, there's just, you know, four equals one on the D-line. And, and that, again, you know, like, to be able to – Play a double team um, the way you know some defensive coordinators want you to play it is is just more difficult. But it takes it takes everybody. You mm-hmm. know, if that's the way you need to play it, then everybody needs to be playing it the same. You know, so um, yeah, I mean, everybody just needs to be on the same page. And I think I, I truly think that they did do a really good job at stopping the run for a long time last year. It's just there's there's breakout games where everybody's like, damn, like they can stop. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like those games where they're like, oh man, they didn't really. They did bad, and those games stick out to you more than the games where they did good. Straight right? up games yeah. where they did, yeah. they did hold guys. Man, we are rolling along. We're yeah. gonna take our first break, uh, but he's already te- teased what our second uh, segment is yeah. about. Man, we, yeah. he's, this nah, man has seen perfect. a bunch of that's defensive perfect. coordinators, so we got some questions about the transfer of power in the defensive room. I got my man Tyrone Crawford in the building. Barry Church is here. I'm Heckman Harrison. We'll be right back. Are you the 2024 Dallas Cowboys Fan of the Year? The Dallas Cowboys and Captain Morgan are celebrating extraordinary, inspiring, and original fans. Nominate yourself or the biggest Cowboys fan you know for a chance to be named the 2024 Fan of the Year and win prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Go Cowboys! Hey there, Cowboys Nation. Kyle Yeomans here, sharing that same team that brought you Buffalo, bringing NFL casino games that show America's team on and off the reels. Aristocrat is changing the game with a new experience. Football fans, this means you can pick your team and play your team. Check out the Cowboys-themed casino games developed by Aristocrat, a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Gambling problem? Please contact the U.S. National Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-GAM. B-L-E-R for 21 and over. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. 
Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip back to the players lounge the creators of buffalo casino games brings you a cowboys themed casino game developed by aristocrat find america's team on and off the reels now at a casino near you do you have a gambling problem? <laughs> Please contact 1-800-GAMBLER-421 one and over. You see how I picked up and looked at you? We checking in. We checking in. We checking in. It's the Players Lounge. The second segment is the best segment because we get to pick more brains over here. Tyrone Crawford is in the building. My man BC is up in here. And, man, nobody, nobody seen more turnover as far as the defensive coordinator room than you. I mean, you – Seen quite a few guys yeah. come in and out. Yeah. And what has that transition been like as a player to lose one defensive coordinator that you may be attached to? I know you, you talk fondly of Marinelli yeah. and what that may have been like going to the next administration or next defensive coordinator. Yeah, I mean, you know, coming in, it, it was it was quite easy. You know, I, I came in and we played under Rob Ryan's mm -hmm. uh, defense. And, you know, I was – I needed to gain a lot of weight. I got up to like 300 pounds and, you know, it was the, like, I guess that's really the difficult, difficult, you know, side of things is the, is the different way they want you to play D line. Yeah. Um, and the different way you need to play D line in order, like I said, if, if, if you're not doing it the same as everybody else and you're trying to do your own thing, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of explosive plays and that's not good for ball. So, you know, Rob Ryan, I was uh, two gapping, you know, and, and which was good for me at that time. And that's what I love to do. But then, you know, uh, Kiff came in, R.I.P. Oh, I forgot yeah, we had yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. forgot um, we had Kiff for a hot second. And Kiff came in, and 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 that was a, a great transition because Marinelli was the D line coach, mm -hmm. and it was again off the ball, off the ball, and then speed, speed was our thing. Tampa two. Um, yep. The then he went from yeah. a three four to a four three. Four three. Yep. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, and so Kiff was the coordinator, but you know Marinelli was. You know, I don't know. Like they were both kind of running the ship, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, it was it was it was Kiff, but it was really Marinelli. You know, holding it down for those entire, pretty much my entire career, almost my entire career, um, which was which was great because you know I loved the way our defense was played. Um, mm -hmm. It was played the same every time. You know, the 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 point was, hey, you could know what we're doing, but you got to stop it. You know right. what I'm saying? Like we're gonna get off the ball, and you, you got to stop it. And the tape never lied. And yeah. that's the, thing. the <laughs> yeah. tape never lied. Yeah, you, we were rolling. You were in your gaps, and they were like, "Hey, yeah. you in your gap? This is what. This is why we had an explosive play. Yeah. I mean, it was like oh. blame it on you because that's why. <laughs> yeah, right, right there. Right you there. do exactly what it was. Right? Um, but then, yeah, um, going uh, when when Marinelli left um, and went to the Raiders. Um, and then we had Nolan come in, and then, you know, it was a completely different technique for me. So, um, again, you know, they tried to play me inside. Wasn't I, I would have I would have preferred outside in that in that defense mm -hmm. uh, just because it just wasn't meant for me. I was, uh, you know, at that time, 280-pound D-lineman. I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> able I wasn't able to. You were about you know, to say 100-something like, pounds. Yeah. You ain't probably weighing yeah, 100. Yeah, That's just fourth grade. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was up there. <laughs> we bought <laughs> right no but yeah um so yeah just the just the difference in uh in, in d coordinators um is it is the difference in the way uh you know you play your gaps the way your assignments played and um you know that's where i struggled um when nolan came in um you know i struggled to to hold the gaps mm -hmm. and to, to play the double teams they wanted me to play the double teams i was used to blowing up the double team and you know getting there first before you know letting them get to me is um weird and i wasn't a fan of it um tried my best to do it I, i'm I, again i'm not the type of guy that's gonna you know evade from the from the team the way mm -hmm. we're supposed to be doing things i'm gonna try my best to get the get it done the way it's supposed to be uh but that's kind of new uh, that's kind of you know you know 
a little percentage of the reason why you know I knew it was it was getting close to the time that I need to uh, <laughs> be done the game. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I mean, it it was um, definitely a blessing to be able to you know have all those coordinators in my career and, and meet different men uh, that love the game of football. Um, but yeah, I mean, Marinelli's defense was obviously my favorite, and 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 again, like even in Zimmer's or or last year, like to like I'll say this right now. To have a great – like, if they had a Barry Church, you know, like like a oh, Barry like Church. Be out of it. <laughs> no, like, like safety, like this, the safeties and strong safeties, they're, like, so, like, important in those defenses. And, like, you know, we had the, the Blues Brothers. We were just talking about that offset. Yeah. But, you know, um, hitters, downhill players, um, fast players, and just, just ball guys. That's it. Yeah. That's, um, that's what they wanted. Barry, how does that, how does that impact you? Because we, obviously the front half impacts the back half. Also, you've been through that transition mm -hmm. as well. Um, going from Dan Quinn, we think about three safeties. Yeah. You know, now yeah. going to the two safety look. Man, our, our, man, our zone look now mm -hmm. with, the, with the, no, zone look now with versus, Lee, versus what Dan Quinn would do in man. How much of a transition would that be for the secondary guys also to make an adjustment? Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a huge adjustment, just like Crawford was talking about with the D-line. Um, when you look at it, you know, like Nui always says, Warren Sapp says, you know, the, the back don't work without the front. Yes. And, that, and that's 100% true. The more you can get on that quarterback, the more you can stop the run and make that team one-dimensional. The easier it makes our job in the back end. But when you switch up coordinators like that, and I'll go back, you know, to our example – early on in your career when we had uh, Rex Ryan was here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got Mo Claiborne, who was a corner in the secondary. And, you know, he was a man guy. LSU, Thorpe Award winner, because he was able to lock people down and just play man to man. And that and that was it. That was what his job was. So in, in Rex's system, you know, he was a man guy. And he was able to flourish. And then we transitioned to Marinelli's system, which was, you know, more of a 4-3. You know, we played, you know, some man here and there. But we were more like a fire zone type of thing, mm -hmm. getting after the quarterback and having eyes on the quarterback as a secondary. Now, for me, I loved it because I was able to just kind of float around and, and do my Palomalu thing where I'm just kind of like, all right, I'm going to help over here. I'm going to help over there. I made blitz here and there. So I loved it. But when you got guys like, a you know, a Claiborne or a Carl on the outside of that are used to just man to man, I need to lock this dude down and playing zone and kind of communicating more with the secondary, it, it makes things a little bit tough. So um, when you bring up those points about the D-line, you know, how they play double teams, I didn't even really think about it that way. I'm thinking, all right, yeah, this guy needs to be able to hold it down. But there's true because when you, you know, you're used to penetrating and then blowing things up, and you come to a system where, oh, man, I got to hold it down right here instead, mm -hmm. it, it's a whole lot different. And I didn't even think about it um, through that lens that yeah. it, it can turn things around. So that's why, you know, we brought up that question you know, switching D coordinators because this team obviously went from Quinn and now they're to Zimmer. And Quinn was a predominantly man, kind of exotic, multiple defense, blitzing from here and yeah. there. And then you got Zim who's kind of kind of similar to Marinelli, which is, look, we're going to line up in this. We're going to have variations off of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we may look the same. We may blitz from that same look. But it's predominantly going to be like, this is what we're in. We'll see what you can do. Uh, so the players are definitely going to have to transition, but, you know, that's why, you know, they're professionals, and they should be able to go out there and, and get the job done, and we'll see what they can do this year. How refreshing is it as players to see, like, this defense is still kind of in that vein of forcing those turnovers. They, they got to pick six yeah, in this did. game yeah. as well. And, and yeah. But you you guys know, you know, if you live by that, you die by that. Is that something also, obviously, you see that transition carry over to this this team. Is that something positive for you? You're saying, look, I just want to see y'all stop the run. All that other stuff is going to come later. I, you know, I, I love it because, like you said, when, you, when you're talking defense, ball guys are, are where it's at. And if you got guys that can get after the football and take the ball away in, in any means necessary, then you're going to have success in that defense. So, you like, we got ball. You like, look at Diggs. Diggs, I don't think it matters what system he's in. He's going to get after the football. Same with Bland. He's proven these first two years that no matter what system, zone, man, he's going to find a way to get the ball yeah. and, and, and take it back the other way. And then you got guys like, you know, D-Law who, you know, he, he may not have those same sack numbers that he had years ago, but we talked about it last year. He's probably the best run defender that we've seen on this defensive yeah. line. I mean, that guy plays at an extremely high level. And, of course, you got the big bazooka. You got you know, Parsons out there being able to do what he does. So they have, in my opinion, enough ball guys throughout that defense to where 
they they can make some noise. They can they can definitely make some noise. But it all comes back to me. You, you got to be able to stop the run because if you can make that team one dimensional, then I mean the rest is history after that. So guys, I gotta you know I, I believe over the weekend uh, Jerry did an interview where he was talking about the team still being active in acquisitions and free agency. Mm-hmm. And they're combing all of the rosters in the NFL, but history has shown us. Yeah. That when it comes down to signing a free agent, uh-huh. we're going to get the guy that is, you know, long in the tooth, tenured, you know, and it's not going to be one of those splash pickups or, or anything. Mm-hmm. Do you see that this team, this the way that things are rounding off right now, do you think that the Cowboys, even with having to sign CD, even to sign Dak, sign Micah, seeing them make a splash in free agency on this to help this D-line before the season starts? Do I see that happening? I'm hitting my tambourine. Oh, man. I, <laughs> Take him to church. I just, I, I, I don't, I, I could be honest, I don't see it happening. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it's been a string. I think the last, we talked about the last big time free agent signing, like, like splash, top of the market guy was, you know, you know, maybe B Carr, you know, when we played. And, you know, we talked about it, just, it's just not in, I don't know if it's their formula or however they, you know, want to break things down, but, you know they 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 rely on getting the free agency free agent guys that you know maybe you're towards the you know the bottom half and you know get long in the tooth you know ten years eleven years and you know that that has worked you know, on some occasions but when you look at it the the season is so much longer now yeah. almost you know eighteen seventeen eighteen games you know it's hard to put you know x amount of plays on a guy in year eleven. You know, it, it's tough. It, mm-hmm. it it is real tough, and that's just something I you know I really didn't understand when it came to you know the Cowboys as far as you know going out there and, and acquiring new players on the team is, and it, you know, and it ain't guaranteed to work if you go out there and get a prime no. guy. It's not uh-uh. guaranteed to work, but you know, I just feel like maybe just to take a shot at it every now <laughs> and then to take a shot. But it's easy for me to sit here and say that you know I ain't on the field no more. It's easy for me to sit there and say that. So. You know what Jerry always says, you know, he likes his guys and he, yeah. and he likes to, you know, groom them from when they draft them and pay those type of guys, which I understand as well. But, you know, sometimes you may need to go out there and get you a prime guy to take you over the hump. You know, I, I don't know how you feel about I, that. I, mean, I really appreciate about that about Jerry, by the way. You know, he, he likes that, his that, guys. That's true. That, Keep is him around. true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> no, that's, that's, no, that's, that's, that's a good yeah, philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. I like that. Absolutely. Stay with your guys, Jerry. <laughs> absolutely. Um, no, but I, I do, I do think, yeah, like you know, if there, if if there's the the person that you know you can't pass on, yes, take that shot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like, I don't see anybody out there right now that they can go and grab the D line. I love Osa. You know, I love oh, what yeah. Osa can oh, do. Yeah. He's not in the, you know, like he's he's um, dealing with some things right now. So, you know, he's not in there right now, you know. And I think, you know, with a little bit of help and a little bit of, um, I guess, like uh, understanding of, you know, what this defense of interior line needs, I think it's just going to grow on these guys and just they're just going to get better and better inside. Um you know, but it kind of it, – it's just it, – it needs to happen. I, a lot of people want to see it right now. You know, a lot yeah, of, a lot of people want to see, you know, you know, that improvement right now. And, you know, hopefully it does happen sooner than later. But, um, you know, I don't feel like, you know, there's anybody out there that, that can go and, you know, fix the problem. The problem is – to me, it's easily fixed. You know, we just, you just well tell <laughs> us, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, we're, we're hanging on every word. What? What do you got to say? <laughs> oh man. Well, I, it's it's not it's not. I'm not saying it's an easy fix, but it, it literally is. Just just do your job in that moment. Just do your job at that moment. And there's ways. So say you we were talking about people getting kicked out of their gap. There's ways to stop that from happening. You know what I'm saying? Bring like make the linebacker do something to stop that from happening. Yeah. You know, like there there's ways to, you know, improve on those on those, you know, areas where it's a little bit flawed right now. Um and I and I think, you know, yeah, please go go and get the splash guy if you can go and get him. And I don't know any if you know a name, throw it out there. But like I don't know any name. I can't think of anybody that they can just go and get at easy. Or, I mean, especially I at this point. Yeah, the, at this the, point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would have been great. In the off season, but um, yeah. again, you know, I, I, the guys that we have, I think they can handle the job. Um, I'm, you know, and I, this that's keeping it real. Yeah, yeah it is. I got you. I think they can handle the job. I just think, um, you know, it just needs to be this defense needs to just they just need to feed on it and just get better at it and um, and 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 live it and and just just 
you don't have to be all fancy. Just get in there and hold that gap. <laughs> hold that gap so a linebacker can make the play here or here. And then the nose, hold that gap. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's it's – when you're thinking about it, it's not that hard. But yeah, you you see, like if if somebody didn't do the right thing somewhere else, then yeah, you're gonna get knocked out of your gap. Yeah, he go, I mean, he go, it's gonna it spill is. out. He he fighting it. Yeah. He fighting he it. It's gonna, yeah. it's do your damn job. Do your, it's yeah. gonna come out. <laughs> hey, what are you doing on Sundays, man? You you busy on Sundays, man? You still likely you got a little run in you, yeah, man. You right. got, no. got some staffs in there. Yeah. Yeah. You got some no. staffs in there. Man. Sundays Sundays is, is for you know we chilling, we, we relax. You know, that's in the Bible. So you, you relax on Sunday. Uh, yeah, that's for the girls and you know just to um just to learn and you know uh you know give give our praise and our appreciation to him man. believe that, that. Yeah, absolutely. hey man hey we, we like i said you never know a man until you do a show with a man so we ask a couple questions here on this show just to get to know people yeah. um uh, tupac or biggie i'm going tupac tupac okay. Mm, okay. Uh, 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 your, your favorite eddie murphy movie um Come on. Don't be taking my card. You know what I'm saying? Right, we ain't going to take no cards. We ain't going to take no cards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> Don't say it. Oh, my God. Come on. We, we waiting. <laughs> Come on. Your card is out of your pocket. Yeah. I, I, I don't got one, man. You don't oh. got one. Man. I don't got a favorite Eddie. Like I mean, I love I love them all. I don't got one. But if I, you know, if I had to say one is 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 when I was a kid, man. Like you know, watching them. What, what? is life top five? Huh? Is life top five? No. Wow! Hey, give, give me some. Give me some. Cord, <laughs> give me the card, <laughs> man. No, no, no. What? You ain't like Flynn. Don't even worry about this. You is my thing. This is my <laughs> thing. I, I, I watched it when I was older. So. You know what I'm saying? Martin Lewis. Oh, yeah. Because Martin. No, ask me about Martin. No, so now nah, that's it. That's like, no, 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 no. We're, right, we're yeah. good right there. We're good yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, I bet we Jip, are. Okay, Jip Jazz. Jip Jazz. Go ahead, take us to break. Yeah. Hey, hundred grand. You good, man? Oh man. I'll be hearing this for new. I ain't done. Why? To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. I'm Cowboys alumni, Danny McCray, here with Smoothie King asking, what's that sound? That's the sound of me sipping one of their Power Pack smoothies with over 10 grams of protein. With real fruits and organic veggies, because at Smoothie King, what you see is what you sip. So grab a delicious Smoothie King smoothie, throw a straw in your jaw, and get sipping real. Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Hey there, Cowboys Nation. Kyle Yeomans here, sharing that same team that brought you Buffalo, bringing NFL casino games that show America's team on and off the reels. Aristocrat is changing the game with a new experience. Football fans, this means you can pick your team and play your team. Check out the Cowboys-themed casino games developed by Aristocrat, a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Gambling problem? Please contact the U.S. National Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-G-A-M-B-L-E-R for 21 and over. Raising Cane's presents the other rules of football. Rule 1, any broadcast without the express edition of cook-to-order Cane's chicken fingers is prohibited. Rule 12, no crinkle-cut fries, Texas toast, or craveable Cane sauce constitutes an illegal formation. And Rule 31, anybody who loves to feed their game face is an eligible receiver of Cane's. When it comes to winning game day, Cane's rules. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. One love. Go Cowboys. To the Players' Lounge. 
Cowboys Nation 2024 Dallas Cowboy Training Camp presented by American Airlines is here. Head to sunny Oxnard now through August 21st to watch the team practice. Admission is free. For more information, visit DallasCowboys.com slash training camp. Back in action for the final segment of the Players Lounge. Heck, Harrison, that's Barry Church. And then Tyrone Crawford has come into the building and sat down with us, keeping it PC. He had thrown anybody under the building. <laughs> that's uh, the captain. I mean, that, that's why he Nobody's was, under the bus. He He's kept it real, all right? But I've been digging, man. I've been trying to get some dirt. Uh, just something from you, Cap. Come on, now. That's why they called him. That's why he the cat. <sighs> you know I mean, man. he took, he, I got he took accountability for fabric. It's not even that. Like, listen, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm good, though? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. We can oh, hear okay, you. So right. you're good. Yeah, you're good. So, for me, honestly, I, um, I, had, I had players – do the same thing to me, and I'm like, I'm a fighter. I mean, oh, yeah, sadly, yeah. sadly, yeah. I'm a fighter. Oh, I've, I've had some regrets in my life, but <laughs> like when I would hear it, it would initially like get me angry to the point where like the next time I seen him, I was like, yo, like you're smiling in my face. Like, why, why are you smiling in my face? Like, I heard yeah. what you said to me on air. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I want to punch you in your mouth right now. <laughs> yeah. But like, so I, that's why I don't do it. Like, I have, I have to calm back. You know, I have to stay back from that. Tyrone, I, I don't think you have to worry about that, bro. Oh, no, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about anybody punching me. <laughs> I don't think, we can I, get I, down I, if you want to get down. Wa- I just <laughs> walked up on you. And I, I can tell you no. from one man to another, I don't think that. No, nah, nah, I'm not nope. worried about that. I don't even Nobody's... want them to have them emotions. Me. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I want to just respect. be loved. Like, hey, yeah. All right, I man, love. Let's, let's keep it church then. Let's <laughs> yeah, keep respect. it church. No so, so here's a, a question I have for you guys. Obviously, a lot of Cowboy Nation is concerned about the running back room. Okay. How concerned are you guys right now? Going into the season, you have Ezekiel Elliott that obviously is ninth year in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rico Dowdle, a guy that really still I think is unproven. All right. I would say that. All right. We got mm-hmm. L Boogie. We got nah, we got nah, <laughs> I can't believe you brought that. <laughs> we got <laughs> I can't believe you had that. I'm sorry, I can't believe you messed that, bro. Yeah, Look, I can already yeah. tell. No, listen, <laughs> what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to help the show out here. No, okay? I so, get it. I get it. So I, look, here's here's what I'm asking, guys. And and you gotta feel feel as far as this coming down to the final fifty three. Will the Cowboys keep four mm-hmm. running backs or will you go with three? Um, and that comes down to the question about Rico Dowdle and Malik Davis. Yeah, so when, when it comes to me, like you said, I think you're going to keep, you know, Zeke for sure is going to be here. Because at the very worst, even if he's nowhere near, you know, Zeke of 2016 or however you want to see him, at the very worst, he's going to be able to put the ball in the end zone. That's like true. when you get to the two yard line, three yard line, he's going to be able to punch it in. And that's where, you know, this team last year kind of struggled. Uh, they had a lot of explosive plays, but when you got to those short yardage situations, there wasn't really someone who can get it in the end zone. So you know Zeke's going to be here because he's going to, at the very worst, be able to do that. And he can pick up blocks, you know, as, with, with, with one of the best of them to do that. Uh, so to me, it, it's going to come down to Malik Davis and, um, and Rico. And okay. I, you know, they may keep, I just, I can't see him keeping all three because you're going to have to put, um, Hunter Lipke on there, L Boogie gonna have to be in there because he's a that's, special that's teams L. guy. Yeah, that's L Boogie. So you're gonna have to <laughs> nah. keep him on there because he's gonna be special teams guy, your fullback. You know, you're gonna have to keep him on there. So I think it's gonna come down to those two. And they're very similar. If you look at it, you know, Rico's a slashing guy. He can he can get you explosive plays, but so is Malik. Malik's showing a burst in the preseason game. He so to me, what it's gonna come down to those two individuals is you know, what can do who can do more? Who can receive out of the backfield? Who can, you know, pick up the blocks if something were to happen to Zeke as far as a blocking back? Who can put the ball in the end zone from the two-yard line? And who can who can contribute on special teams? Because you're not going to hold a roster spot. If you're not that starting guy and they're not going by, you know, running back by committee, wow. who's going to be able to contribute on special teams under Fossil's, you know, crew a little bit over there? Because that's what you're going to have to do Absolutely. in that backup, you know, second or third team back. You're going to have to participate on special teams. So who's going to be able to go down there, cover kicks, cover punts, you know, do those type of things is what it's going to come down to. Um, I didn't mention Deuce Vaughn. Forgot to mention Deuce Vaughn out there as well. He showed some some spark yeah. in, in that Raiders game. Mm-hmm. Um, elusive guy. He can be that kind of receiving back as well, maybe a returner as well. So it's going to be a tough cut down. But, you know, to me, when it comes down to those guys, it's, it's going to be between Rico and Malik because they're very similar. And it comes down to me is who's going to be able to do more for the team. Running back. Yeah. I mean, just just in my time at camp, you know, I I, I say my top three: Zeke, Deuce, Deuce, and um, Davis. Davis is his last name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blake Davis. Yeah. Da- the Davis kid. Um, I like those three. 
Um, and again, yeah, like you said, keep four or three. I, I don't think they're keeping four. Um, so, um, those are my top three. And I think, uh, I think, yeah, Zeke, like you said, you made, you made a lot of good points. You know, Zeke is, uh, is a guy that if you, if you need that ball in that end zone, he's, he's a pick. They're going to get in there. He's, he's a dog. So <laughs> he's, he's going. And then I, I've been a Deuce fan, you know, um, I'm a huge fan of his dad too, Chris. Love Chris. So, yeah, the dude, uh, the but dude. that's, I'm not being biased. I think Deuce is, is a great running back and, um, you know, I think he can he can hold his own. He's got heart, and then uh, you know, I just I just feel the heart out of uh, Davis as well. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I, I'm really in, still in that vein where I'm looking f- to see who can be that home run hitter, who can be that home run guy. You mm-hmm. know, who can be mm-hmm. your guy to take that take it take it to the outside, hit it. You know, your 40, 50 yard game, something like that. I think that's what we were looking at before with Pollard and in Elliott being that. Thunder, lightning, that whatever. Punch, yeah. You know, one-two punch. And everybody in, the, in the, every team in the NFL kind of has that one-two punch. Now that we got Zeke back, who's going to be the other guy? I mean, looking at Deuce Vaughn, I think offensively, you ask yourself, can he pick up the blitz, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, he's going to have to contribute on special teams as well. So it's going to be interesting coming down to the cuts because it's going to be a lot of guys, a lot of great guys uh, out there that, you know, that get cut. But I got to ask you this before we go. Does the C.D. Lamb – contract thing bother you at all to this point are you saying look they're going to get this thing done here pretty soon and he's going to be ready to go for the season as a seasoned veteran do you say look this guy needs to get here now get you know get this timing and everything down you know um just just watching how the zach martin thing played out and just being a cowboy and Mm -hmm. seeing jerry's shenanigans uh, (laughs) (laughs) you know throughout my whole career um I'm not worried about it. You know, I can see how people could be worried about it, but I'm not worried about it. I know that uh, one huge thing for Jerry is, you know, all media is good media. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the even just the little the little shots thrown um, back and forth yeah. at each other is, is good for the Cowboys. And um, I don't I don't I don't <laughs> see I don't see any I don't see this going further than game one. Obviously, it would be great for him to be a part of the team before that. But. CD is one of those players that doesn't need to be, you know, like he, he's still gonna, he's still gonna go for dumb numbers, you know, that game one, if, if, if he showed up on Friday, yeah, Thursday, Friday, but yeah, I don't want that to be the way, (laughs) please please, Jerry, just get it done. I don't want it the way it it is, but you know, um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to see him go anywhere else to tell you that. Uh, he's I, I feel like he's the best wide receiver in the game right now. So uh, BC, where, where are you at on this man? Have uh, you took the button? Have you took the glass off the button yet? No, he gotta get it done. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, say, he, I mean, this is a, this is a must. Um, I mean, we talked about it. The passing offense is is CD Lamb when you look at it. I mean, yeah, Ferguson is an upcoming you know great tight end, and you know he can he can do he can be a mismatch nightmare for those linebackers and mm-hmm. safeties. Um, but when you talk about an all-around threat and defenses, you know, got to put all their resources towards stopping one guy, it, it, it's CD. And even when they do, because we've seen it, the past, it was like the last what eight games, each game was almost a buck fifty out there yeah. for him, and they double team him, triple team him, they tried all they could. That guy, he, he's he's one of the top in the game. And, and if you want a passing offense and you want your offense to be productive, I mean, you got to get the guy in there. Hey, we had we hadn't got an opportunity to see Cooks, but I I can tell you this: at looking at that fourth, fifth, and sixth CD, you know, uh, wide receiver out there for the preseason, mm-hmm. get it done. Get him in there. <laughs> get, it done. get him in there ASAP. Man. Get it get him, done get him right now, get him in guys. There. We talked about – I didn't think we was going to get through no, this whole thing. We, we got, got through this whole – We got through it, man. The time was short, man. Looking we, back we, on it, man, we, we had a good time. So we I'm we you over was, now. That's boy, crazy. You was, hey, you was that close. I, the, all we need is one show more show. Is, the show is – hey, you are all the show needs. <laughs> That's it, <laughs> I mean. Hey, you can bring it. You can just, you can just get it done. We're going to laugh. We're going to hey, be We're going to have a good time. All I need is one more show with you, dog. You're going to be messy, Marvin. You're going to be messy, Marvin. You're going to tell it all. You're going to tell it all. Invite me back. <laughs> They're gonna be running up on you in the hall. Let's, let's, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's not have a, a glass with us, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's not, it. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's all we need. Yeah. Hey, this is, right here. Really? <laughs> hey, man, this has been cute. this has been so much fun, Aristocrat. We we spoiling y'all right now, man. The Players Lounge will be back on Wednesday. Wednesday Nui yeah. will be right here. I'll be over there somewhere. BC will be oh, right be in the there. Scene. Tyrone Crawford, my man. Oh, man, man, good to appreciate see you, bro. Big Thank you for showing up for the Players Lounge. Pinkies up, baby. This has been the Players Lounge. 
This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?